Hi, welcome to this example in my series on friction. This is the first example in the series. I'm assuming that you've looked at my first video, the introduction, which told you about what friction was, the coefficient of friction and limiting equilibrium. If not, maybe you might like to go and uh, view that. Uh, just go on my site and look on the index uh, under friction. Okay, well assuming that you're familiar with friction, you might want to pause the video even and just have a go at this question. Anyway, so let's see how you might have got on if you had a go. What we've got here is a block of mass 20 kilograms rests on a rough horizontal plane. The coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is 0.25. Calculate the frictional force acting on the block when a horizontal force of 1, 40 newtons and 2, 53 newtons acts on the block. And in each case, state whether the block will move and if so, find its acceleration. Now the first thing I'd want to do is sketch a diagram. So we'll have our rough horizontal plane there and we'll put our block on the plane. So there's going to be its weight. It's got a mass of 20 kilograms so its weight is going to be mg, mass times acceleration due to gravity. So in this case it will be 20g. 20g newtons. There'll be the contact force from the surface, that would be the normal reaction, which we'll call R, and that would be R newtons. And we're pushing this block with a horizontal force to the right, say, of 40 newtons. And this is for case one. And we've got to decide whether this block is going to move. Well, there's going to be friction opposing motion to the right, okay? It wants to move to the right, so friction is going to oppose that motion and act towards the left. We'll call that F for friction, and that will be F newtons. The question is, does it move? Well, we know that friction builds up and up and up until it reaches its maximum value. And what would that maximum value be? Well, in my introductory tutorial on friction, we learnt that F max was always equal to the coefficient of friction mu times the normal contact force. F max equals mu r. So, what would be the maximum force then that friction could exert? Well, mu, we're told, is 0 0.25. So, we've got 0 0.25 times the normal contact force R. But what is R going to be? Well, maybe we should just step to the side for a moment and calculate what R would be. And to do that, we would resolve in the upward direction, in the direction of R. And if we resolve upwards, we've got R minus 20G equals 0. These two forces of 40 and F do not come into this equation because we're resolving in a perpendicular direction to what these forces are. It equals zero because the particle is in equilibrium relative to the plane here. Okay? There's no resultant force. It doesn't want to lift off the plane or go into the plane. So if we rearrange this, we find that R equals 20G. 20G newtons then. So, what is F max going to be? Well, it's mu times R. We've got mu then as being 0.25. So, we've just got to multiply it with the 20G. And if we take G, the acceleration due to gravity, as 9.8, then you find that you get 49. 49 newtons. Now you can clearly see that in case 1 where we're pushing with 40 newtons to the right, because R and the 20G act perpendicularly to the horizontal direction, can you see that the friction here is 
a greater force than the forward 40 newtons. So therefore, F couldn't have reached its maximum of 49 newtons. Okay? If it did, then this particle is automatically going to go zooming off to the left, which we know doesn't happen. So friction cannot have reached its maximum value of 49 newtons when we're pushing with 40 newtons to the right. So basically, what is F? Well, it's going to be 40 newtons. So it doesn't move. Let's just resolve to the right, okay, and just see what we would have. We'd have 40 minus F would therefore equal 0. F would have to equal 40 newtons. So that block does not move. Now in case 2, I'm sure you most probably can guess that it is going to move. Because we're applying this time a force of 53 newtons to the block in a forward direction. So if we draw our block in here, we've got our forward force here of 53 newtons. We've got the weight acting downwards, 20 g newtons, and we've got a reaction R newtons. Okay. Now, this frictional force here, that we know the maximum that it can be, is 49 newtons, and we're pushing with much more than 49 newtons. So this must be the maximum value of friction. So it is going to accelerate. It's going to accelerate in this direction at a meters per second per second, say. And I would strongly encourage you to draw a diagram like this, not to get lazy when you're working these problems out. They're going to get harder, okay? So always I would encourage you to draw diagrams. So if we resolve now to the right, We've got force equals mass times acceleration. What is the overall force then to the right? Well, it's going to be the 53 minus the 49. These two forces, R and the weight, don't come into this equation because they act at right angles to the direction that we're resolving. And this overall force here, this resultant force, is equal to the mass, which is 20, times the acceleration, A. So that's applying Newton's second law, equation of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. And if we work this out, 53 take 49 is going to give us 4 equals 20A. Divide both sides by 20 and you get that therefore the acceleration is 0.2 meters per second per second. So our particle moves when, uh, when applying a force of 53 Newtons. OK, a fairly basic example, but the first one in the series, hopefully that you can follow that and uh, you'll look at my next example, example two in the series, where we'll do much the same kind of thing, but I'm going to apply a force at an angle now to a particle on a horizontal plane.